happy. I would say that Dayton University, one thing they do is they really work hard to keep the tuition the same as it is when the student enters. That was one interesting thing for us. Our Lauren went on a visit to some schools in North Carolina and learned about a program, a degree program called leadership. And that really, that really, really was her interest. So that then drove our search for her and she landed at the University of Delaware. Then Macy, she was very interested in the maritime industry and we eventually found her perfect spot in the Bronx at SUNY's Maritime College. And um, SUNY is our regional maritime college, which also makes a difference on tuition. So if you're interested in that, please, um, please let us know. And if you're interested in any of these stories in more detail, I'm certainly happy to share after tonight. Um, our, our, our youngest son, um, decided he loved football in high school. And he also decided he would really, really like to pursue career in tech ed as an instruct as a teacher. So he, after, after looking a lot, he landed at Millersville University. And in the end, it's the only school he applied to, um, which is, is a surprise, that's a surprising story for me. Um, but to find a school that had that career in tech ad program that was a division two program was, had to, had to find the real sweet spot there. I will say that Pennsylvania schools are very interested in Virginia students. So I say that somehow our four kids landed in all out of state schools and um, it worked for them. It's the right spot for them. And I think that the effort that you all are beginning or probably already began before tonight to try to figure out what, where is the right spot for your student. That's what we wanna be a part of and join you as you figure that out. So that's what all tonight is about. And we're delighted to have our counselor team with you. Um, we have a lot of new counselors on our team and we are so pleased. They have great energy and we're just gonna really start tonight out with a terrific speaker, Janine Lalonde, and um, you're gonna have some terrific uh, chances to learn more about your school counselor, our process, as well as those opportunities that are really in our backyard at NOVA. So thank you very much and welcome to the evening. Okay, next up, um, we want to, for a little bit, um, go over some of the resources and timeline for college readiness in grades 9 through 11. Um, and to get us going on that will be our uh, counselor, uh, Ms. Megan Greidinger. Hey, hi, everyone. Um, so I am going to go ahead and share my screen and we'll go from there. If I can find my screen, hold on now. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Okay, wonderful. All right, thanks for bearing with me on some of these technical pieces. I'm not seeing the right screen. Okay, we're just going to go from here. Okay. All right, this is very silly, but the Zoom window is hiding my present button. I'm so sorry, everybody. My joke. All right, here we go. <laughs> um, so thanks for bearing with me there. My name is Megan Greidinger. Um, I am a new counselor at Marshall. Crazy things going on with my blinds. Um, and I'm gonna be talking about the timeline for underclassmen. Um, so um, that we know we've got a bunch of different grades on this call. We've got lots of different um, thoughts about. And so I wanna make sure we, we sort of tailor this a little bit to everybody. Um, so for the ninth graders who are in the room, um, ninth grade is a really exciting start to high school. 
And some of you may already be thinking about what ninth grade could potentially mean for your college. Um, we really want you in your ninth grade year to allow yourself to explore and build your communication skills. If there is a class that you've always wanted to try, we want you to take that class. If there is a class that you did well in that you think you want to try at the honors level, we think that's a great idea. Um, it is a great time to get involved, to try new things, to explore different clubs or interests that you might have. Um, it's also a really important time to start building good habits, working um, in terms of your work academically, um, and figuring out what interests you and what courses you're in, you enjoy and you want to pursue. Um, it is also very important that you check your email daily. I know that can be a transition from middle school, and that makes a big difference in terms of being on top of things. Um, it is also a great time, and we really hope you do come meet your school counselor um, and start talking about your goals. It's okay if that is a, you don't know your long-term goal yet. Um, it can be a short-term goal. It can be sort of what you're thinking about or what you're hoping to accomplish. Um, can you all not, I'm sorry, I'm getting some messages that you all aren't able to see me. Is that true? I'm going to, it's look like the screen share is on the wrong screen. So I'm going to try to share from the, the PowerPoint. The backup yeah, it's, copy. it's in the L drive. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll give that a go. Okay. Thanks there, Mr. Humphreys. Okay, do you see that on your screen? I do. Yep. Okay, great. So go ahead if and I'll I'll just change slides according to your timing. All right, perfect. Um well, I think we kind of covered ninth grade um thinking about your goals, talking to your counselor. It's a great time to start thinking about what diplomas you might want to do, what academy classes, but mostly in a hypothetical at this point. Um all right, in 10th grade um, 10th grade is a really great opportunity to explore your personality and interests and get involved. Um, there are a lot of really great tools on Naviance that can help you explore career clusters and career paths. And um, I think that Naviance also has some like more personality type tests of like strengths and things you're good at. Um, so it can be really wonderful to explore that. Um, we want to make sure you're staying strong with your grades in uh, your sophomore year, keeping as many options open as possible. And sophomore year is a really important time to start um, practicing balance. Um, we know at Marshall, our students tend to be very involved. Uh, they tend to try very hard academically, and we love that for them. Uh, but we want to make sure you're taking care of yourself, maintaining that balance. Um, and sophomore year is a great time to practice that. Um, you want to continue building connections with your teachers, your counselors, and your classmates, because those connections are going to be really important. Um, and it's if you haven't already, it is an awesome time to join a team club or extracurricular activity, including volunteering. Okay, and then we get to 11th grade. Um, 11th grade is where things get a little bit more concrete where you um, are wanting to show ways that you can demonstrate your interests and skills. You're starting to think about how you might tell a college the story of who you are and what's important to you and why you want to be a part of their university. Um, this might mean um, showing how you're showing commitment and depth in activities you're involved in, thinking about things like if you can take on a leadership role in a club or an activity, um, thinking about where you're working, the role you, you have outside of school. It is also when students will start thinking about the SAT or the ACT and how they're going to prepare for that, and then talking about with your school counselor about crafting a well-balanced schedule. That's a schedule that shows that you're taking rigorous classes, maybe getting involved in some IB or academy classes, um, but you also are keeping things balanced. You're not overly stressing yourself unnecessarily. Um, you are also in 11th grade gonna start your college search. It's a lot of fun. Um, so you can visit your college or take a virtual tour. You can start to think about what you're looking for in a college, whether it's big or small, public, private, um, urban, suburban, um, cities, 
rural, all great options. Um, Naviance has some really great tools for finding colleges. Um, can't make it for a college tour. That is absolutely fine. Mr. Humphreys has some wonderful college speakers who come to Marshall to talk about their school and answer questions really directly. Um, it is also an important time to start talking to your family about your budget and applying for financial aid. Um, it's important to note that everybody needs to do FAFSA. Um, even if you're not thinking that's a priority for you, everyone should do FAFSA. It is often used as like that front gate into um, scholarships. So please fill out your FAFSA and come see us if you need help. Um, and then using Navions as a resource as you're looking for admissions requirements and trends for schools you're interested in, trying to figure out what a, a good fit college for you would be. And that's it. And I'm going to try and fix these blinds. <laughs> okay, thanks very much, Ms. Greidner. Um, Thank you. Next up, we're going to have uh, Counselor Ms. Jenna Malora talk about um, working with your counselor with a special focus on senior year. Ms. Malora. Hi, everybody. Can you give me like a smiley or thumbs up if you can see me and hear me? If you guys have access to that, I'm not even sure. So, <laughs> um, oh, I see people raising hands, so that's good. Um, well, good evening. Um, let me just go ahead. Do you see the screen that says like, wait, what? Raise hands, good. Okay, I'm just trying to, um, let's see. Is that better? Okay, I think I'm good. Hopefully, I think one of my colleagues would jump in if not. So hopefully you got, we are on the right screen. Um, all right, so I'm starting with this slide because I just feel like this is how I felt as a senior and maybe this is how you're all feeling. So it's okay if you guys are sort of like, wait, what? Like, what's my next step? What am I supposed to be doing? I'm already a senior, oh my gosh, right? Like it really comes quick. And so we are um, here to help you along the way. Um, so what is next in your life? I think what I'm gonna talk about tonight is really what your counselors can help you with and then what some of the processes are that you should just keep in mind um, throughout the year. So again, I'm Miss Malora, I'm one of the counselors. There are eight of us and we will all be there with you along the way. Um, one second. All right, so tonight we're gonna to be talking about four bucket. So this part of the presentation, I will preface by saying that it is geared a little bit more towards um, going to four-year college, but we will definitely be doing more presentations and spend more time with students who might be looking into two-year colleges or military or apprenticeships, gap years. We do support with all of that too, but just keep in mind that this presentation um, will look mostly towards the four-year track. Um, so we will talk about four buckets tonight. First is the transcripts and recommendation. Then we have SATs and ACTs. We have applications and essays, and then financial aid and scholarship. So we're actually gonna start first with our testing bucket. Um, sometimes this comes first um, because you might have noticed that, you know, starting in 10th grade, you guys take the PSAT. 11th grade, we offer the PSAT again. And then you have the option to take the ACT or the SAT um, to, to see what fits best for you and if you need to take a test for the colleges that you are applying to. Um, I just wanna bring up that there are a lot of colleges that are now test optional. And if they are test optional, that really means they are test optional. Um, talk more about us on an individual level if you have questions about that. But most colleges we talk to say that if they're test optional, they really do not look at those tests as much as you might think. So it might be the last thing they look at in an application. Um, we want to remind you that um, there is the PSAT for 10th and 11th graders on October 12th, and there is the SAT for seniors also on October 12th. Um, seniors, you do need to apply or register for this by September 7th, and the counselors did send that out in our Monday email. Um, the last thing on this bucket is the sending of scores. So we want to let you know that if you do plan to send SAT or ACT scores, um, that is up to you. We do not send scores for you. And so when you get a score, there are ways to do that through College Board and the ACT website to send directly to your college when you are ready to do so. 
All right, on to our next bucket. Um, the next bucket is transcripts and recommendations. So this is another bucket that kind of comes up super quick. Um, as you might have realized, especially if you're a senior, um, you were supposed to fill out your senior information packet last spring and submit it to us. Um, we use that information as counselors for your letters of recommendation. So that's super important. Um, same thing with your teacher. If you want to ask your teacher for a letter of recommendation, um, filling out something like that or giving your teacher some background information um, is, is super, super helpful. Um, so if you haven't done that yet, we really recommend you do that soon. And if you need us to resend the link, let us know and we'll be happy to do so. Um, Next, and this is one of the biggest things, and I think in our breakout sessions, we'll be able, again, to answer a lot of your questions if you do have questions about this, um, but our transcript request form is super important. That is how you guys tell us what schools you are applying to and which schools we need to send transcripts to for you. Um, so the form we sent out in our first senior email um, last week. Um, so you have access to that digitally. Um, it's where you can sign a waiver so that you're basically waiving your right for us to, or for you to see recommendation letters that we send to colleges. Um, that is something that you do have to do. We are not permitted to show you those letters. Um, and then on the back of the form, are, is where you lay out and list all of the colleges you're applying to, whether they're on the Common App or whether you're they're mail-in, um, however you might be applying. And then you let us know the deadline and we send everything in for you by that deadline. So it's just super important for you to be on top of it so that we can be on top of it as well and be on the same timeline. Okay. Um, so, when we talk about types of applications um, and, and essays, um, there are a few different types of ways you can apply to college. So there's early decision, early action, regular decision, and rolling decision. So the biggest thing about early decision is that it is a binding decision. So if you get accepted to that college, you are going to go to that college. So we always say that unless you're 110% sure you want to go to this college, you visited, you know what they offer, you are married to them, then early decision might be the way to go. Um, early action is an early application. So being in the first pool of applicants, um, but it is not binding. So you can apply early action to a few schools um, and that is, is not binding. And so it gives you a little bit more flexibility. Um, then we have our regular decision application, which is you know a, a later deadline. So typically early action, early decision is around November 1st and typically regular is um, December 15th, January 1st, January 15th. So you have a little bit more time there. Um, and then rolling admissions, some schools offer this in terms of like, you know, they kind of take applications as, as they get them um, and they don't necessarily do it in big pools like some of the other schools do. Um, so start, we, we like to say that it's really important once you start making your list to make a, a spreadsheet or a list of the important dates and deadlines that you need to keep track of um, for yourself and also in turn to help us. Um, we also say that starting to work on your essay is really important now because you want to think about what you might write about, get some ideas, think about a theme you might do, you know, talk to your family, talk to some teachers, um, bounce ideas off of people, but ultimately your essay should really be a story about you that really, you know, um, tells something to the college about yourself as a person, as a student, and, um, you know, makes you maybe stand out from others. And so it's not necessarily supposed to be just listing what activities you've done, right? You really wanna make it as personal as possible in terms of, you know, telling a story that will be, um, that will highlight something about you. Um, and with that being said, that is a lot of that application and essay bucket. And again, um, that is up to you to upload all of those materials um, to your application. Um, but if you need help with any of that, we are here to support you. And then lastly, we have our scholarship and financial aid bucket. So we will have another night called financial aid night 
um, if you want to specifically learn about this. Um, but this is just sort of that last piece of the college application process that I know that um, students and families wonder about. Um, the FAFSA, which is the Federal Financial Aid Form, it can be started October 1st. Um, and we really recommend you do this, even if you're feeling like, oh, I might not know what I'm doing or I might not need it. Um, it is used to be considered for other merit type scholarships and opportunities such as grants and work study. So even once you get to college, it's really important to have this application in place so that they can, so that the college you go to can refer back and, and open up some more doors for you. So um, that is something to think about to start doing um, come October. Okay, and then so, we're past the four buckets and we wanna kind of move into sort of telling you about um, how we can support you and who your team is. So again, there's eight of us counselors, we're divided by alphabet. Hopefully if you're um, seniors, you, you kind of know who some of us are already. We do have a new team. So I know that the new counselors um, who are on our team are eager to meet you all. Um, but as counselors, we wanna kind of define our role versus maybe Mr. Humphreys. So, as counselors, we assist. We can assist you in finalizing the list of schools. Um, we do submit a letter of recommendation if the counselor letter is um, requested or or um, required of the college that you're applying to. Um, and then we also send your transcript and the secondary school report and the school profile um, for you. So that is all a part of that process. Um, again. SAT and ACT scores are sent by you, but if you do need an S or a waiver for any of those exams, um, we can help you with that in addition to waivers for the actual application fee. So please talk to us if that's the case for you. Um, and then the other support person, our amazing college and career center specialist, Mr. Humphreys, who um, introduced us tonight, um, he's really good at helping you to search for the right college. So if you want to meet with him and, and talk about college match, like this is my GPA, this is what I'm interested in, like how does that kind of all fit together? Um, he's really good at helping with that. Um, he can help you with career inventories, figuring out what you might want to do in college. Um, he also does help with essay uh, support. We have some essay support sessions that we'll offer um, also, so be on the lookout for those. Um, and then he is the point person for scholarships and financial aid as well. Um, so, and in addition to us as your two support people, we want to just remind you that as counselors, we do send out a senior series email. So you probably have gotten one or two of them from your counselor already that lays out some really important information. So please just keep an eye out for that and read those and save them if you're not ready to read them yet. If you're not, you know, maybe doing early action, it's okay to save them and uh, see them later. Um, and then lastly, we just wanted to show you this graphic um, because this is something that you can use in Naviance um, and it shows you um, sort of like it's called a scattergram and it shows you students who were accepted, who were waitlisted and who were declined. And so you can actually go into each of the schools that you're interested in and see from a, a more, I mean, you can do it locally, like from Marshall High School and, and maybe a little bit more globally in terms of the applications that they um, accept or waitlist or decline. And so you can see they here it's, it's, it's listed by GPA. Um, and so we like to just remind you that this is a good resource for you to look at if you are interested in a certain school and just sort of seeing some statistics on admissions for that school. Um, all right, and I think that's it for me. I am so excited to be here and I will see my students in the breakout session. Um, and um, I hope you all have a great night. Thanks so much. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Malora. So I am Gardner Humphreys and uh, the College and Career Center at Marshall is located right in the main lobby. So please feel free to, if you're ever in school, um, picking up a student or uh, there for whatever reason, stop in, see if I'm there, say hi, check out the room. Um, there's some resources in there for parents too, um, but you can always feel free to set up a meeting with me and I'll put up my uh, email in a second on my first slide. You can always uh, set up a meeting uh, either in person or on Zoom, and we can talk further about how I can help you. So 
so my name is College and Career Specialist, and although tonight is called College Night, I do help with all of the different options for uh, students after they leave Marshall. So um, I don't just help with four-year colleges, I help with all kinds of colleges and also um, other career paths. Uh, we have students who pursue the military, who are looking at an apprenticeship or a trade, um, students who are getting a certificate or an associate's degree in one certain area. So I help with all those things. Just the particular theme tonight is, is two and four year colleges. Uh, so please, if you do have uh, other students interested in other paths, uh, I may be able to help them as well. So um, the first thing I wanna give you is just an overview of the kind of different things I can help with. And that will be both through either uh, meeting with you one-on-one uh, -on -one or uh, with you and your student or through some of our programs or information that we have on our website or in our Schoology class. Um, so the, the main kind of a place to find all the best information, I would say definitely if you're a student and you're using Schoology often, is uh, our Schoology course, and that's in Marshall Student Services. Um, so uh, all parents and students are already members of that course. It just there's a lot of Schoology courses, so you might have to open up, click on my courses, get your full list, and then go down until you see the Marshall Student Services one. Just make sure it's not the Marshall Academy one. Um, and then in that, the, the first folder you'll see is the College and Career Center, and that's just divided by topic, and it's topics that are a lot like the ones you see on this slide. So those have uh, links to past presentations from things like Financial Aid Night, SAT, ACT Night, um, some college search guides, um, just uh, military service guides, um, Army, Navy, Academy, uh, Coast Guard Academy uh, guides to preparing for those, all, all those types of things are in there. Now, I know um, not as many parents use Schoology, so the uh, College and Career Center page on our Marshall website, which is also in the student services section of the Marshall website, um, has kind of a, a streamlined version of a lot of the resources on there. And um, that is right there on this slide and also in the chat as well. And that's where this presentation and this recording will be after tonight. Um, if you if you want to share it or look at it again. So um, some of the other things I help with besides college research, um, as Ms. Melora mentioned, uh, I definitely do that. Uh, also financial aid. Um, financial aid is, is not just filling out the FAFSA to reduce costs because um, a lot of it will be trying to find, uh, assuming, you know, if you have an idea what kind of aid you, you can get, or if you don't get much need-based aid, then that's aid based on your income, you may need to research colleges just based on how, how affordable they are, how, how much they are within your budget. And that can take some time. It is not, it's not a, a very sim simple process, um, but there are some resources and some areas where we can find colleges in a certain kind of budget range or colleges that maybe give out more merit aid um, for students who have, say, these types of grades. Um, and so that, that takes some time and research, so I'm glad to help you do that. I also help with student jobs, so that's your traditional after-school jobs, you know, in the evenings on weekends and in the summers, and also jobs that, you know, maybe in an area that you're interested in learning more about or lead to something you might want to study. Um, and also volunteer opportunities and leadership opportunities. There's a couple of great spreadsheets of those, um, both in the Schoology course there's also information on the school website on our page for that. And also in Naviance, which is our big uh, college and career site, which all parents and students have a login for uh, that we saw those scattergrams of college admissions from earlier. Um, and the last thing is test prep. We can talk about how big a role the SATs or the ACTs are gonna play uh, in your future, um, how much time you should set aside for them, when you should take them, um, some free prep and, and where you can get that. Um, so these are all areas which I'm happy to help with and looking forward to working with you more one-on-one. -on -one. Um, okay, next up, um, here are a few events we have coming throughout this year. Um, we are, I'm still working with our speaker for financial aid from David's College right now to finalize the date for our financial aid night, but that will be a Zoom and that will be uh, probably sometime the, around the second week of October, second to third week of October, uh, but I'll send that out when I have it and also post it on the school calendar. Uh, that's a great night to learn how financial aid works, um, how the how they what they use to determine how much money you, you do or don't get, and all the different factors involved. Um, we mentioned the PSAT and the SAT before, so October 12th we will have an in-school PSAT for grades 10 through 11, 
and uh, students don't need to do anything else for that if you're a grade 10 or 11. If you're a senior on October 12, you can come into school to take the real SAT, not the PSAT, but the real one, but you do have to fill out an intent form to do that. Uh, and that was sent out um, from the school on an email on 8-16. Uh, so if you're missing that, well, you can also use the link below, uh, two more check marks down if you wanna uh, take a picture of that. Um, it's there as well. Uh, Ms. Miller mentioned essay help. So um, weekly we have essay help uh, from myself and I have four or five volunteer advisors who are great. They're all either retired English teachers from Fairfax County who also do college admissions advising or professional writers. And so we do that in person Mondays after school, uh, right after school. And we can also do it by appointment on Zoom or through Google edits uh, any other time throughout the week. So uh, next week I'm sending out a Google form so that seniors can sign up for help. And then we'll assign them to uh, myself or the different volunteers as we go along and we do that all the way through the winter. Uh, we will have a whole evening dedicated to understanding the SATs and the ACTs. Uh, talking a little bit about how to use your PSAT score, and that will be in mid-December. And again, working with our speaker on that to finalize the date, but we usually do that the second week of December, right before break, but after we get the PSAT scores back, so you have something to look at and something to work off of. Um, I'm going to do a college info session just for uh, rising 10th through 12th grades in the, the spring. Um, so that would be uh, a whole evening just dedicated to not current seniors, and that will be in the spring when seniors won't want to listen to me anyway. Um, and so I'll, I'll share out the Zoom for that. And uh, another big event, our, our large event for juniors, kind of as they head into their summer before their senior year to, to tell them everything coming up and give them all the help they need is going to be on April 12th. We call that Junior Focus Day. So students just come, come to school at the normal time, and there's a series of sessions throughout the day. Uh, where they can learn about all kinds of things having to do with college and, and also career on that day. And uh, the last I'll mention is we, we usually offer uh, either once or twice a year the ASVAB Military Vocational Assessment. Um, we're, we're waiting for the regional date for that. It'll be, it probably won't be at Marshall, but it'll be at another school. Uh, and several schools will go to that, um, that regional school to take it if you're interested. But I will have the information on that um, probably in two to three weeks at the latest. Um, so, so that's it for uh, events right there. I wanna share a few websites with you um, just for your own research. Um, we mentioned Naviance, that's the only place where you can get school specific admissions data and history. And a lot of college admissions is really school specific for them to be able to figure out what your grades mean. They need to you know, have an idea of kind of what the, how, how challenging the academics at the school are. Um, so. Um, college admissions is very school specific, and the scattergrams that Ms. Melora was showing earlier are, are great in Naviance, and you can access, access that with your parent view login or uh, through this, the Schoology course, it's up in the apps, or you can just ask your student to log in and show you as well. So there's a few other links down there as well, including the college boards. Uh, our guest speaker is from UVA, and that's Ms. Lalonde, and her blog is on here, and that's a uh, great advice for kind of not just understanding uh, UVA's college admission process, but just kind of getting perspective on the whole, the whole season of applying in general. Um, also a couple good sites there. That first site under financial aid and scholarships is great for learning what schools give up, give out, uh, what kinds of aid, whether the aid tends to be mostly based on families need or income level, or is it also based on merit? And if so, how, how many people get it and what's kind of the average amount they get. So that's a good way to try to find schools that fit a certain budget. Um, and then there's a couple of career exploring sites right down there. The last one is, is sponsored by the new uh, Amazon partnership to try to figure out some careers you might be interested in IT. Um, okay, so that's everything for uh, my slides. And uh, at this point, we're gonna um, kick over to a different area. We're going to talk about uh, Northern Virginia Community College, which is our outstanding community college in the region and has a lot of tremendous options, both for pursuing career, further higher education, uh, you name it. And so, and we have with us tonight our Northern Virginia Community College representative, Ms. Eunice uh, Torkanu. So um, I'll let her go ahead and take over.
Hi, everyone. Can you all hear me? Okay. So I'm trying to share my screen. Give me one second. So my name is Eunice Torkunu. I'm one of the admissions um, outreach coordinator, and I'm located in the Annandale campus. So today we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, your future here at Nova. So if you decide to come to Nova after high school, or if you decide to take some classes um, during your high school, you know, academy year, um, whether you are a junior or a senior, uh, we're going to touch a little bit about that. So a little bit about what NOVA, what NOVA is. I know many of you have heard about NOVA and even you have friends and family who have attended NOVA, but what does, that, what does NOVA have to offer you? Um, I'm gonna start off with some general facts about, about the college and then break down some certain perks that come with NOVA and being a NOVA student. So NOVA is one of the largest public education, educational institution in Virginia. And we are one of the largest community college in the United States. And we have about six location. Um, we have Alexandria, Annandale, Loudoun, Manassas, Woolbridge, and the medical campus that is located in the Springfield. And we have more than 75 students, including online and about 2,600 faculty uh, and staff me members here at NOVA. We ha also have over um, about 130 degrees at NOVA. I lost my screen. Can you see me? Can you see my screen? No, we cannot. No, I'm not. I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, um, give me one. Let me try it again. You could. Um, let me try it again. Okay, share. see if it works. Let me share my screen. Can you see it? Yes. There we go. Okay. Sorry, my Wi-Fi is a little bit crazy here. So. Like I was saying, we have over 130 degrees at a social level in certificate programs. Um, we also have different certificates and the associate degrees that are offered here. And do you know that um, NOVA is here for you if you decide to choose NOVA? So how do you, how do you apply? You can apply through online. If you go to our NOVA website at mvcc.edu, you click on the upper, upper top tab, you just click on apply, or you can come in person if you need any assistance um, with the application. Uh, we do have open enrollment and do know that NOVA offer open access enrollment. And we believe that everybody should have a higher education. Um, so if you are in advanced, honors student with 4.0 of 4.5 or 4.0 or even lo lower we do accept, we will accept you as well um we have over 24 percent of local high school graduate that do make the decision to come to nova and nova also have like a small a smaller classroom feel so if you're in a classroom that have like 20 students, 30 students, um, NOVA have that compared to a four-year university that have over maybe 50 to 100 students uh, per course. So you do, you will have that intimate, you can ask questions, you won't have to feel shy asking your professor questions. So that small feel of having a class, you know, is, is also available. Um, we also have a diverse student population, which have over 180 countries represented in our campus. 
And NOVA is where you will learn. Um, you, you can work as a work study through financial aid, and you can even engage in um, different clubs, different um, activities, different leadership um, programs. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the degrees that we offer here at NOVA. Um, it is common that, you know, a lot of different institutions do offer what we offer here at NOVA. Um, we have um, a social degree in art, which is the AA. Um, those are the transferable degrees, and we have about 23 degrees designed to transfer. Um, we have um, AAA, which is Associate of um, Art. Um, if you have completed about 25 classes in fine art, liberal art, and music program, the AAA is designed for transfer to other institutions to earn a bachelor's degree. And we also have the Associate of Science degree, which is known as the AS. And that is upon you know completing 25 classes in different variety of pre-professional programs, such as engineering and other various sciences. And the AS is also designed to transfer to other institutions to further earn your bachelor's of science, known as BS degree. We also have AS of Fine Art, which is AFA, and that also you have to complete about 25 classes in fine art and performing art. And the, a the AFA is designed to transfer to other institutions to earn Bachelor of Fine Art, and which, will, which you can focus in fine visual or performing art. And we also have non-transferable degrees here at NOVA. And if you see AS, AAS, I'm sorry, AAS, those are applied degrees that, um, that prepare students for direct employment in a technical field. So these are most common in like automotive um, technology, cybersecurity, health science, hospitality. Um, and we also have Associate of Applied Art, which is AAA. And those are for mu music, um, if you want to focus on music. And we also have different certificate programs. And the certificate programs are um, really designed for skilled trades and technical jobs. So NOVA do offer um, the CSC and in general is awarded for career um, related courses and programs. So these are designed for enhancing current job skills, training for career changes or to accommodate the growth of specific, um, let's say if you are in a job where it's asking you to get a certificate, NOVA do offer those as well. Next slide. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the transfer opportunities that we have here at NOVA. Um, NOVA graduates, we do have the guarantee admissions agreement, and NOVA graduates are guaranteed admission to more than 40 area colleges and university, university when they meet the agreement, the agreement requirement. So this covers selection of in-state, out-of-state, international, private, public, and online institution. So the requirement is if you complete a transfer degree here at NOVA, which is the AA or the AS, and it has to be a transferable degree that you choose. And you have to maintain a GPA of specific, specified by the four year. So every um, JM, JMU might have like 3.0, VCU might have 3.5. Um, so you have to go online and search it up. And if you go to another website and you type in GAA, it will come up with different school and what they are requiring. And you, always, you also have to complete a, minim, a minimal number of credits here at NOVA in order to be, um, to be admitted in this program. And you have to earn a C or better. 
And some school might, uh, might ask you to write a letter of intent as well. And we also have the advanced program. And the advanced program is a new partnership between Nova and George Mason specifically. And advanced takes all of the guest work from transferring to um, GMU. Students who are admitted to this program will be able to complete an associate degree here at Nova and then transition to George Mason to complete a bachelor's degree. So each advanced student will have a first year advisor here at Nova and also an advanced success coach at JMU to guide them through the process. So if you have any questions, um, you can visit our website, you type in advanced, um, it will come up, you can read more about it. And we also have the Nova Systemic um, Program, and that is also designed to equip students in demand of technology careers and expand any, if you're interested in engineering, if you're interested in um, cybersecurity, um, usually during the summer, you can um, join. So next year coming, um, do look into that for the seniors. Um, we also have the G3 program, and the G3 program is a new grant program to help students who have low or modest income, and you have to be a Virginia resident to get a job in a high demand field. Um, you can also study part-time or full-time, and the scholarship is to cover all the financial um, aid questions or all the financial aid, um, financial aid stuff that you have towards um, your your classes. So there are eligible uh, programs that are designed for this program specifically, which is in the healthcare, uh, computing, um, expert businesses, primary education, and public safety. And if you visit this website, it tells you more information about that as well. So if you have any questions, um, my name is Eunice Torquino. Again, um, I'm in the Anadoc campus and my email address is etorquino at mvcc.edu. I'll be coming in person as well or through virtual um, to help all the seniors with application session, information session. So if you have any questions beforehand, you can email me as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Torkinu. Uh, so now we're gonna move on to, um, oh, and we'll just um, end that screen share. So now we're gonna move on to um, our guest speaker from the University of Virginia. Um, we're very glad tonight to have uh, with us Ms. Janine Lalonde, who's been working with Marshall um, for, and, and with me uh, in the Career Center. Um, for a number of years, getting uh, our students giving them a good idea what's involved in not just the University of Virginia, but also the whole college process, the application process, and just understanding what really works for them and putting it all in perspective. So um, welcome, Ms. Lalonde. Thanks so much. And uh, thank you, Mr. Humphreys, for not saying actually how many years we've been working together. Um, I've been around for a while, so I'm at the point. We've got to help each other. It's very nice when someone says, "We'll just uh, we'll just ignore how many years." Hi, everyone. How are? You? Hope everyone's having a good evening. Um, I have some slides to accompany me. To be honest, a few of them are repetitive. Now that we've had Eunice and then Ms. Malo sorry, Malora, um, there are going to be there's going to be some repetition, so I might just flip through them a little bit quickly. Uh, but uh, just to plug, I am going to be visiting Marshall on October third. Uh, just for a UVA visit. My talk here is more general about college in general and college, uh, the college search. Uh, it, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit nerve wracking, especially when you're in a metropolitan area where uh, there are a lot of self-appointed experts on this process amongst the experts on this process. And it can get a little bit scary when you hear uh, people's takes on how this all works. So I'm gonna start with some good news. Number one, 
the majority of colleges in this country are going to admit the majority of their applicants. Selective schools like mine are not normal. Most schools are going to be welcoming most of their applicants with, with open arms. There are just some stats here that about 20 schools in the country out of the thousands that we have access to have admission rates under 10% and about 60 have admission rates under 20%. So it's a very small number. Of course, those schools tend to be ones that people talk about a lot and they see on TV. So there sometimes is a perception that this process is going to be very hard and very stressful. And we don't take away from the fact that yes, it is stressful, but the fact is that you can put together a list if you use your resources and talk to your counselors, you can put together a list that includes colleges that are gonna be really excited to have you. Um, I think it's also really smart to go into this thinking about how there are multiple matches for every student. Obviously, um, I'm at a school where there are a lot of people who say, this is the best school ever. And I think, yes, it, uh, yeah, I think it is. But I also know that if you love my school, that you probably will love the feel of some others because of our size or our location or the school spirit that we have. So I think that it helps to go into this thinking, there are gonna be lots of great options. It's almost like going shopping for a spiffy new outfit. You know there are gonna be lots of things that fit, lots of things that look great. There's probably gonna be a few that emerge as your favorites before you make your final decision. And the last thing I'll say, we are extremely lucky in Virginia. We have a huge college system. We have lots of great options, no matter what you want to study, no matter what kind of student you are, there is a home for you in Virginia. And I should mention uh, that all of the Virginia public universities and many of the private have guarantee agreements with the community college system. This list might look a little bit small on your screen right now, but if you Google VCCS transfer programs, you will find this list and access all of the agreements. These, are, these agreements basically tell you what colleges always say yes to in their transfer processes. So if you use those agreements as a roadmap, you're giving yourself a great chance of admission, even if you don't fulfill every single thing on the list. So consider that, aren't we lucky to live in the Commonwealth, right? Uh, now let's talk about some things that you can do now and how parents can kind of support their student as they're just getting started with all this. First of all, I think that being in Northern Virginia, you're very lucky because you can do a taste test pretty easily. You can get onto the campus of a large public, a small private, a city school, a residential school pretty easily. You can get to Mason. You can get to one of the smaller schools in the area. You can get into DC to see what a city campus looks like. I think that even if these schools don't wind up on a student's final list, I think it really helps to get a feel of the vibe on these different campuses because a student campus that might give them a different idea about what they want. They may say, oh, it's not exactly what I thought it was. Um, the next thing, I'm sorry, I need to be happy. And those could be serious things. What kinds of programs uh, do you need academically? But then also you should think about the fun stuff too, because if you're not happy, you're not going to be engaged in and out of classroom, getting the most out of the experience. I think that sometimes there's a tendency to look to ranking systems to tell us what the best colleges are. Just because an editor says that a college is the best college doesn't mean it's the best college for your student. I think we need to think about what each student needs to feel happy, engaged, supported, excited about learning, and find the colleges that have those characteristics, as opposed to letting someone else tell us what are the important characteristics of a college. Uh, again, we're focusing on matches for the student and the fact that there are multiple matches for everybody. I, I, this is a little bit controversial. There are all different um, words that people use to describe the different kinds of schools on a student's list. And some will say, oh, that's, a, that's an unlikely and that's a likely, or that's a match and that's a reach. Um, I think that when, when, when a lot of us were younger, we used the word safety a lot to imply that something was a sure thing. And 
At the same time, there was a small subtle message that it was lesser. A sure thing, a school that absolutely wants a student is not lesser. That is a perfect match. And I think that sometimes using safety can kind of, uh, or stop using the word safety can help a student say, yeah, a school that loves me back is a perfect match. It's not a safety school, All right? I also think that something that parents can do, especially as this really starts ramping up, is designate a certain time of the week when you're going to about things. If it would search, can kind of dominate senior year and part of junior year too. Some people may already have experienced that in the past. Um, I think that it's really smart to say, hey, senior year is a big year. There's a lot going on. And a lot of it's really exciting. So let's make sure that we have time to talk about college stuff, but we also have time to revel in all the things that make senior year exciting, interesting, but also give a student time to deal with some of the stresses that come with being a senior and not have this be a constant part of the conversation. Okay, I'm gonna go into some data a little bit. This is a little bit nitty gritty, um, but I always like showing people that admission officers are looking at, for the most part, all of the whole. This is what that all factors are considered. Some factors are considered more heavily than others. And grades and courses are going to be the biggest factor. Notice, this is a chart from the result of a survey of admission officers asking them, what do you use in the review process? And notice that GPA is not in those top little, little spots because GPAs aren't standardized and GPAs don't provide the amount of detail needed in this process. The transcript tells us the actual courses the student took, the grades they earned and the trends in their, in their progress. And the GPA is attempting to summarize that, but it doesn't really provide those details. So that's why this chart starts with courses and grades. Um, and you can see all the other parts of the application fall in with that. There's also this perception, uh, I see this sometimes online of people saying you have to apply to lots and lots of schools. You have to spread your applications all over the place. Um, that's not exactly normal. Most students, if you, you can see here, this is some data um, that was put out by, uh, who put this out? Um, either Common App or College Board. Uh, most students are applying to, um, to like three colleges or maybe a little bit more, but the majority, minority of students are applying to more than seven. That's uh, you know, 36%. Okay, uh, so I, I already kind of referenced this, but I just wanna quickly go through the parts of the application. I'm gonna try to leave time for Q&A afterwards. High school profile is a document that your school sends along with the transcript that explains how the school operates. So for Marshall, it's going to explain how the IB program operates. For admission officers who don't know, in Virginia, IB programs are super common. So admission officers are familiar with IB already, but there are places where it may, it's not as common. So they may need to start with that and understand what the options are and how IB works. They'll explain the, how grading works at the school as well. Um, remember, the, G, the methodology for calculating GPAs is on the Fairfax County uh, uh, profile, but um, the GPAs aren't standardized. So at my school, we don't even use GPA really. Some schools will recalculate them or recalculate multiple versions, but we're looking at courses and grades at my school. Um, and remember, course rigor is not a number. It's, it's not like you say, well, check, they have X number of um, or at an IB school, they have X number of AHLs and therefore they're admissible. Um, we're looking at where the student passes. And I do think uh, you should remember that on most applications, there is an additional information section where a student can put anything that they want admission officers to know that wasn't essay worthy. Sometimes you wanna explain, well, I got really sick in my 10th grade year and my grades suffered a little bit, but I rebounded, I'm doing better. That's totally fine. All right, quickly, recommendations. Just follow the directions for each school. A lot of schools are going to ask for an academic recommendation, perhaps a counselor recommendation. Sometimes they're open to non-academic recommendations. Just give the admission office what they want. The, the instructions for each school are basically the admission officers telling you what they use in the process. So just give them those things and don't make it too complicated. You don't have to give them more. Um, just make sure you give them exactly what they want. You don't really have to worry so much about recommendations. All recommendations are positive. What makes them different are the anecdotes that come through. And I think it's really smart that when it's time for a student to ask for a recommendation, that they tell a teacher, 
why and what they did in that class. And that can sometimes jog the teacher's memory. You know, tell the teacher about the project that they did that got a great grade or the paper they wrote that they were especially proud of. And that can sometimes make the teacher say, that's right, that was a really great paper. It's been a semester since I read it, but I'm, I'm gonna tell them about that or I'm gonna tell them about that project the student did. Uh, activities, this is really interesting. I, I think that um, because of the word holistic, some people, at least I see this online, students sometimes think that holistic admission means you can get in for a non-academic reason. Um, and they think I need to find an activity to do that's strange or unusual. I have to like be the founder of something or the president or captain of something. That's not necessary. You have to remember that at, at selective schools, the academics come first. Um, and at, at, I'd say that all schools, academics come first. The activities are where you see how the student decides to spend their time outside the classroom. Um, I'm at a larger school where we don't have to uh, intentionally create variety in the activities of our incoming students. When you have 4,000 students in the first, first year class, there's going to be variety, but some schools will be intentional, intentional, excuse me, intentional about having variety when it comes to the extracurricular interests of their students. Okay, let's go into a couple of optional items. If something is optional, the rule of thumb is if you have it and it's strong, you submit it. If you don't have an item that's optional or you have it and you're not proud of it, you don't submit it. You don't get penalized for not submitting something that wasn't optional, that, excuse me, you don't get penalized for submitting something that wasn't required in the first place. I think people understand that when it comes to art supplements, but they don't always apply the same thinking to testing. So you know, okay, there's an option to send an art supplement and you know if you should or shouldn't. Um, and you should think about that, that same mentality when you're looking at testing. Do I like this score? Do I think it'll help? I'm gonna send it. If you don't like your testing, just apply test optional. And uh, let me show you, this is an, a great chart that I just found today. This is from the Common App. This is the percentage of Common App applicants that submitted testing. So it went from 70 something percent down to 40%. So most students have taken advantage of this option to apply without testing in their applications. Uh, just, I'm gonna wrap up in a second, but I just wanna quickly mention a few things that come out when you see people giving advice about essays. Uh, you are not, you're not uh, charged with being unique or setting yourself apart in essays, uh, we're just looking for students to share their voice, their style, something that's important to them. Uh, I sometimes think that people Google essays that worked and they think that these unusual essays that are publishable are the norm. They're not the norm. <laughs> they're unusual. They got onto those websites and they get into those books because they're unusual. So that is not the bar. The bar is share something that isn't coming through in the rest of the application. Um, the essays don't have to be connected to a current academic interest unless the prompt is telling the student to write about their academic interest. Essays in the same application should do not have to be linked when it comes to the subject. In fact, I think that's a myth. If a college gives you multiple places to write, you should tell them different things. And um, some people are convinced that you need to have a theme. I'm I want to be an engineer, so I'm just going to write about robotics in all of my essays. Well, I've not learned anything new each time I've read something different from you. Tell me something else. Tell me, tell me something that hasn't come through in the other parts so far. And also, uh, some people say you don't say anything controversial. Um, I always say, you know, when you're reading um, 50,000 applications, you're open to all kinds of voices. So. If you have a strong opinion about something, if you want to talk about um, a, a, a cause that's important to you, I'm happy to read about it. I don't have to um, agree with your stance on something to say that you wrote a thoughtful essay about it. Um, okay, so uh, if you have any, we're going to have, I think, some question time, but if you want to get in touch with us in our office, there's Dean on call every day during business hours to answer questions by phone. We have some people who man the general email account, and then you can also reach out to us on social. I'm UVA Dean Day on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. We also have UVA admission at the office account on Twitter and Instagram. All right, and that's that's my PowerPoint. <laughs> Great, thank you very much.
All right, so we do have some questions. These were submitted beforehand, so let's go ahead and see, and I'll just I'll, uh, say whether or not I think the best person to answer is you or I, depending on how difficult they are. And let's see here. Uh, and if, if anyone else, any other co-hosts want to chime in, please do. But uh, what are the pros and cons of submitting applications for early decision? Um, yes, so did you want to give that one a go, Ms. Lalon? Sure. So for most schools, when you're applying early, you're getting a response early. So that's really nice, especially if a school is able to give a response before the winter holiday. Um, that means that you don't have to put applications together for those later regular decision deadlines. Um, the trade-off is that you don't have any senior work in your application. So uh, the Fairfax County transcript shows courses in which the student is enrolled as a senior, but there are no grades yet. So you have to kind of think about, do I want these admission officers to review my application with just ninth through 11th grade, or will this, new, this fall semester really help my case? I always say you should submit your application when it's in its strongest position. And I also think, you know, if you're overcommitted in the fall semester, um, it might not be in its strongest position because these applications are usually due in early November, sometimes mid-November. Um, it's always smart to go over this with your counselor because they may have insight into whether a school has um, maybe a more lenient early round. Um, school does not, but there are definitely schools out there where the door might be open a little bit wider during the early period. So talk to your counselor about the schools on your list for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's definitely something we can help you figure out. We can kind of take a look at, what, you know, what's your course load? What, what have your grades been in the past? And then we can use those great scattergrams. And, and just when we talk to the admissions representatives that come to us on the visits this fall, to figure out if early action or early decision is is tougher or or not, or what kind of advantage it gives, and whether or not it makes sense for you, or if you should wait for some uh, first semester grades, for sure. Okay. The, well, another thing to think about early decision too, especially early decision, that's the binding one, where if you do get into that college, you have to go there and you withdraw all your other applications. So you have to make sure that you know if you get accepted to that college that you can go there even before you find out your financial aid. So you got to make sure you, you have a plan for paying for it. It's within your budget. Um, you can sometimes get an estimate, but you, you probably won't know your final uh, price tag for that school. So that's uh, something that might be might be good. And, and a lot of people do enjoy making a second round of visits after it's uh, they, they have a few choices in there as well. Um, OK, next up, um, how can juniors help figure out what they'd like to major in? since that could impact what college they apply to. Is there a website with surveys for this? Well, I'll take a swing at this one and then and then uh, anyone else who wants to add on can as well. Um, so I think, um, you know, I, 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 first of all, just stepping back, I think you, you shouldn't feel too much pressure to pick what you're going to major in in high school, just because um, if you haven't already found a subject or, or heard something that's very interesting that you've kind of checked out as a potential college major or maybe a career area. Um, it's good to explore that in high school, but it, you, you don't, you shouldn't feel as if you have to arrive as a senior at Marshall, knowing what you're going to major in and then having that drive your college search. Um, just because, you know, we do have electives here and an academy and different things like that, but you know, you're taking a lot of core classes. It takes time to really take electives. Colleges are very well set up and have very large career kind of exploration programs right from the get-go when you get there to really help you explore that as well. So I think if, I think the, the bigger question is, you know, how can I start exploring that and, and how much of that have I done and how much do I, do I want to do? Um, so, you know, colleges are usually very happy to get a, a multiple piece of clay and they're very happy to get people who are like really into a certain subject and have already kind of dived deep into it and, and, are, and are already starting to think, yeah, this is something I could really do for a career or a major. Um, but that said, so I, I can definitely help students and, and our counselors can help students explore, do things like check out clubs, take the right electives, figure out what you want to do in the summer or after school for volunteering or a job, maybe look for internships. We do have career assessments as well, which will suggest areas that you seem to be either good at or interested in. And you can see what you think of that. And they will also align with college majors. And even we can suggest schools to look at from that. So 
Um, those are all very good things and things to check out. And I miss, oh, Miss Jenna just added something in the chat, but I just, just missed it right there. But um, anything you'd like to add, add to that, Ms. Lawan? Um, I just put it in there to just reassure because I know that that does come up a lot and students do ask me a lot about figuring out their major. And again, like Mr. Humphreys is sort of saying, like, you know, explore some things, take some electives, try some clubs, like try to get a feel for what you want, but that really doesn't necessarily mean you are going to or have to major in that. It is okay to figure it out once you get to college. Mm -hmm. yep. I think some colleges will have, you know, a, a very small number of schools will look more closely at what you say that you want to major in on the application. Uh, but I'd say the overwhelming majority probably don't. They view it as more of just kind of an interest or a, a interest survey or something that you're saying you, you might be interested in. Um, Virginia Tech is a school which does have you apply to a specific academic department or a major. Um, so that's a situation where you should think about that and make an informed choice there and then have your application back it up. But that's that's a, one of the minority of colleges that has that kind of setup. Okay, next up. Um, how important is it for an 11th to 12th grade student to belong to a club or participate in an extracurricular activity that is related to the major they declare to study in college. Uh, for example, if a student wants to major in business, but they're not a member of FBLA or any business related club or activity, would that reflect poorly on their college application? Well, I know what I would say, but people probably won't believe me. Do you wanna take this one, Ms. Long? Yeah, um, this has literally never come up. Like I would never um, question someone's academic interest because they weren't in a certain kind of student organization. Uh, keep in mind, like many students don't have access to the variety of clubs and orgs that students at your school do. So um, there is no expectation on my part that a student has already had experience in these in these areas. It's if you even on my application, we list it as an academic interest. It's not uh, there's no expectation of experience. And like we were just talking about, we only admit to one major at our school. Everyone else is undeclared. And there are 50 people in that major. So 4,000 first years, 50 have a major and everyone else is undeclared. So um, I think that part of being a teenager and part of being in high school is finding something that interests you and finding things that you no longer want to do. And I think that's fine. In fact, I argue that it's a sign of maturity if the, as the, as the list changes, especially in senior year, when students start saying, I have, I have so many responsibilities and I need to cut back on, on some of the negotiable stuff to get the job done in the classroom. I'm okay with that. So um, I am totally fine if there is no connection between their current academic interests and their activities. Okay. Okay, next up. Um, is, is there a cutoff for SAT score that one should not consider submissing, uh, submitting? Um, is it looked at poorly to take the SAT multiple times? So I think we touched on this a little bit, but most schools are test optional, almost all of them. And so we can help you figure out whether it's gonna be that strong piece of your application that Ms. Lalonde was talking about and something you should put forward or whether or not you choose not to. And that will be different college to college, I think. So we can help you do a little research on that, figure out if they're gonna help you and whether or not uh, to submit it. But um, Ms. Lalonde can say what she thinks, but no, I don't think they look poorly on taking it multiple times. I think what they want to know is your, your highest, most of them, the, the super score, the, the highest sections that you got, math, reading, and writing, put them together. Um, and it, it, that, that's really what they're looking at if you feel that's a strength of yours. Yeah, I think that if you listen to school counselors, counseling staff, and then people who work in admission, they keep saying, when in doubt, just don't, just don't submit testing, go test optional. I think the people that are making folks question this whole thing don't actually work in admission offices or in high schools. <laughs> so just pay attention to who's telling you that you need to do this because uh, I, I'm gonna guess that they don't really work in our offices. <laughs> and I know there's a big generational difference. When I was applying to college, SATs were viewed 
on par or maybe even more important as grades in your courses. Um, you know, a score is a score, people thought, and if one's higher than the other, that must they must have better chances um, to get in. But but really, it, it is just a piece uh, of the puzzle. And, you know, um, it's also a trade off of time and investment, you know, the time you're putting in to take the test to study for the test that might be coming out of, of homework and other things but we can help we can help you look at those great scattergrams and if you if you don't believe me check out those scattergrams and try to figure out if there are green check marks with high SATs but have lower grades than other people if there's kind of a solid trend to say hey these these people have the same grades or these grades are even a little bit lower but oh I see if their SAT score is a certain uh, number a certain height then they're they're getting in very consistently so you know you might even see that pattern at, at some schools it's become more rare but we can the, the key is just to see it and and to believe it and trust that you're not uh, missing something okay next up um uh well a related question if not submitting the sat or act score do other parts of the application become more important uh, what do you think Ms. little the transcript was always the most important part it always was and the testing was always a four second part of the review. So I always, when people said, what was the big change between before and after test optional? And I said, I got four seconds back from each read. Uh, it, it honestly, for me, did not change how I reviewed applications because most of our time was spent analyzing the transcript, reading essays and reading recommendations. Those are the three probably biggest chunks of time that you spend. So uh, testing being there does not change and testing not being there does not change that. Indeed, okay, let's see. Let's see if we have, I think we have one more question here. Let's check out that one. Um, oh, can they discuss wanting to do a sport in college and recruiting timeline and, and what you need to do? That's probably almost a topic better for, um, we might work something in junior focus day on that, but I'm not expect an expert in sports recruitment. Um, we do have a counselor who's kind of like a, a, a contact for us for that process. Um, and so you, you can email me and I can connect you with that person. Um, but that, that is kind of a whole separate and even probably less predictable and more frustrating uh, process <laughs> than this one. Um, but in any case, we, we will help you with there. But if you want to email me or your counselor, we can connect you with um, either someone from our sports department or our counselor who is the kind of um, NCAA or, or eligibility uh, liaison here. Okay, well, I think that's all the questions we have. Um, so... Uh, if there's there's nothing else to add, I want to thank you very much for joining us tonight, Ms. Lalonde. And we will see you on your visit. Okay, so the next thing we have is our breakout sessions. And um, please, if, if any of the co-hosts want to chime in, if I'm overlooking anything. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to have counselor breakouts. So this is a chance for you uh, and we're going to do a, there's a separate Zoom link for this because we can't do breakouts in this webinar format. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a link in a, in a second here to the chat that's going to be to the counselor breakout Zoom. And when you join that, it'll be the same as, as this one. You'll click the link, you'll register for it, and then you'll, you'll get, you'll be able to join that Zoom. There will be four breakout rooms in there and you'll pick the breakout room according to the last name of your student. Um, and, and that's the way that'll work. I'll need about five minutes to set that up. So we'll, we'll start that just before 7.30. So I'm thinking about 7.27 or 7.28. We did advertise it as 7.30. So uh, that's when we'll have the, the maximum crowd, but that's what we're gonna do next. So, uh, okay, let me get the link and put it in there. And again, this will be with the counselor for your students. So a good chance to ask more detailed questions or either questions about the senior process, uh, but all grades are invited to the breakout rooms. So there in the chat to everyone is the link for the breakout sessions. And those will probably last anywhere from 15 uh, minutes to, to 30 if there's a lot of questions, but those will be those will be a little more detailed according to the kind of the process of working with your counselor at Marshall or other questions that we didn't cover in tonight's uh, session. So 
So I'm going to end this meeting now. I want to thank everybody for coming. Like I said, join us in the other Zoom if you want to. Uh, I'll leave that up there um, for just a few more seconds for you to click on it or copy it if we need to. But then I've got to close out this one and go separate, uh, set up the other one. So thank you very much for joining us, everyone.